Hello listeners, welcome to Filmgasm bonus episode number five, Ad Astra. Woo! Uh, going in, unsure, but I'm sure we'll find it along the way. Welcome to Filmgasm. So Ad Astra was uh, released this past weekend, and, well, <laughs> it was a very bizarre movie. Yeah. Uh, space movie, kind of your typical space fair, honestly. Uh, didn't really bring anything new to the table, I thought. No. Yeah. I, I Like, idea-wise, no. No, I mean, I get it. Space travel hurts families. Like, I've seen that a million, million times now. Interstellar did that. Gravity did that. Astronauts don't have stable family lives because they're in space. Gotcha. Yeah. Let's do, let's go somewhere else. But, I don't know, what were your uh, initial thoughts after seeing this? Uh, well, of course, we saw this together. Yeah. Uh, at the old Embassy Theater here in San Antonio. <laughs> um, technically, I was... Technically, this movie was brilliant. Oh, yeah. What, Visually, it's amazing. Um, James Gray is a... Uh, I'm not, I'm not a super well-known filmmaker. He made, you know, The Yards, We Own the Night, Two Lovers, The Immigrant, uh, Lost City of Z, and now this. Um, he's got some serious talent, but all of these all of these movies, at least of what I've seen, I've missed a couple of them. He never, he never quite captures any one idea, and it seems like there's a lot on the table. He's a great um, idea man, yeah. but he never knows where he's going. That's what it kind of seems like. I love We Own the Night. I think that movie's stellar. Uh, but I think this movie just, yeah, it... It kind of reached in places, but would never, yeah, would never like go in the cookie jar. If you know what I mean, yeah, it would yeah. kind of like get up and like make do all this effort to like go there, and it just never would quite. I, specifically, the Ruth Nega character. I, what was the point of that? I, she was the, she. Could, I felt like she was used, and she's a great, great actress. Uh, if anyone's watched Preacher, she's fantastic in that show. Um, I I felt like that was. That was kind of a waste of time, but it was like this huge moment where she's explaining that this massive moment of the plot, which we'll get to. But, uh, but it was I, a moment I, that never went anywhere. Yeah, I feel like there's just so much wasted sp- space, and this there's this talent on the table, like ah, yeah, just didn't quite ah, didn't quite go there. But I, I was I was fine. Like I wasn't necessarily bored because it did look spectacular, and Brad Pitt is pretty easy to watch. Um, you know as time has gone he's one of the biggest stars yeah uh, in the game right now and this is uh, another movie that he's been in second movie of the year for him so um yeah I, I really don't know what like to rate it or what to tell people like you should see this i really don't know um, i think it looks great on the screen yeah like if you're seeing it at the movies you're gonna be satisfied just from the visuals for sure yeah but if you're looking for deeper meaning than that i i think you're gonna walk away disappointed because if you saw the trailer, that's the movie. There is no, yeah, pretty there's much. There's nothing extra that you get from seeing the movie, really, apart from the visuals. And that's really sad because you had the pairing of Brad Pitt and Tommy Lee Jones, and that should be fucking great. But you know, on paper, I'm sure it was, but I don't know. There's <sighs> something missing from this. Yeah, it was pretty frustrating. I was looking forward to this a lot. Yeah, um, I, I had heard people say call it a masterpiece, and you know, we'll. What was the... It has like an 83%. 83% Rotten Tomatoes critic score, but a fucking terrible 42% audience score. That's insane. That is a big divide. I'll go right... I'll go somewhere in the middle, in between 6 or 7, I guess. But I, yeah. I, don't, I really don't know... I don't know how to like recommend this movie. Um, yeah, like Connor said, if you like... If you, if you like that technical stuff, you will be... Um, you'll be entertained. Like I saw First Man at the movies... Yeah. And I felt that the whole time. I was like, this is fucking beautiful. I see. I think First Man's like a much better movie than... Oh, for sure. Than Ad Astra. And it's much, I think the story's fantastic there, too. I think that First Man hits all the marks. Yeah. But Ad Astra only hits about half of them. Yeah. Well, let's dig into the story. Okay. So, takes place in the near future. And uh, Brad Pitt plays Major Roy McBride, a soldier astronaut in the U.S. Space Command, Space Com, kind of like future... Army, Army NASA, kind of. And uh, he's working on a satellite or like an antenna, and there's a massive power surge that wipes out um, electricity in one this of, area. One of the best scenes of the movie. Yeah. So, like, 
very intense. Very intense. It's all from his perspective. You just see you know him fall off this you know hundred mile long tower, and it's crazy. And he's kind of I don't want to say a sociopath, but he's definitely not in touch with his emotions at all. He's very disconnected. So it's for me, it's kind of hard to root for a character like that who really doesn't have <clears throat> anything to latch on to. Hard to root for him and hard to understand any... or get behind him at all. Like, the, the stuff with Liv Tyler, his wife. Yeah, I, I feel anything. nothing in between them. I feel no... There's no connection between them. They There was nothing shown on screen that proved to me that they were, like, uh, a close couple or, like, had a good marriage or... Well, they have no scenes together. Exactly. It's Liv Tyler, again, is, is another actor actress that's used... Like, what? What was the point of getting her on board? You could have got anybody off the street. You got Liv Tyler, and she's a talented... Talented performer, like, come on, man! It's pretty frustrating. It felt like there was just loose ends there, you know, with the with the character development, and it it makes you, like you said, not be able to root for, or care for, Roy 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 McBride. Yeah. So he is the son of famous astronaut H. Clifford McBride, played by Tommy Lee Jones. Hey. And we fucking love Tommy Lee Jones. Of course, he's yeah. the man. He li- he lives not too yeah. far from here. Yeah. <laughs> like like eight miles away. <laughs> his office is downtown. It's crazy. But he was famous for his contribution to exploration on the Lima Project, this mission that was sent to our the outer reaches of our solar system to search for extraterrestrial life. And contact with the project was cut off about ten years ago, and they've heard nothing since. I'm going to say 16 years. So it's been a long time. They were last seen orbiting Neptune, and nobody knows what happened to them. Roy is called in to Space Command and told that the surge that almost killed the planet came from that area, came from Neptune. And they think that the father, Clifford McBride's project, is what's causing this. So they want Roy to go to Mars and try to contact his father, who may still be alive... Yeah, and try to get him to kind of plead with his father to either stop whatever's causing this or let him know what's causing this so they can work out a mission to rescue or destroy whatever needs to be done. Roy is a little shocked to find out his father might still be alive. And he agrees to help, but, I mean, he is a soldier, so it's not like he has much of a choice here. He's told that he's going to have to go to the moon, and from there he'll catch a ride to Mars. And I love the trip to the moon. Oh, yes. It's brilliant. It's now, like a Delta I'm, flight. I'm, I'm really on board for the most part for like the first 30 minutes of this. I'm like, yeah. yep, yep, all right, here we go, here mm. we go. And then it just doesn't. It gets less and less intense as it yeah. goes on. So Big time. But <laughs> the trip to the moon is like a Delta flight. Yeah. yeah. Where they're, you know... They wear spacesuits. They get in a rocket, and they're given like hot towels and peanuts and shit. You have to like pay for yeah, like one hundred twenty-five bucks for a pillow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Inflation. <laughs> <laughs> nice one, James Gray. <laughs> and he's led to the moon, and on the moon, the moon's like a fucking shopping mall. There's an Applebee's. There's a Subway. Yeah, yeah. It's and it's pretty yeah, depressing, actually. It's been commercialized. Yeah, of course. And on the and, and there's there's I yeah. like to point out there's like un, there's like the narration going on yeah yeah from, from Roy from Brad Pitt and he's talking about like you know what's going on around him kind of but it's all very monotone and very, mm-hmm. very yeah no emotion no like okay well what choice do I have I'm gonna do it yeah. and then I went here you know it's a kind of kind of kind of it, it definitely sets the tone I just I don't know if I was totally with that or if that was totally necessary. I know, I agree. I yeah. thought it was unnecessary. There was definitely a touch that was like added, like they were like, "We, it was a conscious decision. We're going to put this narration in there, mm-hmm. and it's going to make the movie better." But I don't know if it did. Echoes of Blade Runner. There. <laughs> yep. 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 And a lot of Brad Pitt's narration or Roy's narration is told through his psyche valves, which he has to do to NASA to prove that he's fit for space travel, and he always passes those because his heart rate has never gone above like eighty. Yeah. Like he's insane. steady as a surgeon. At all times. And uh, on the moon, you get this brief background narration, or, uh, yeah, that there are territories on the moon that are disputed and are currently at war. And on, what? The, on the moon. <laughs> yeah. They're just going to 
put that aside because that's not what's important right now. Yeah, they're like, we just got to get to where we're going. And I'm thinking like, like fuck, I want to see that movie. <laughs> Uh, yeah, immediately, <laughs> immediately, I was like, "Is this about to turn into like Mad Max yeah. on the moon with Brad Pitt territory Fuck disputes yeah. on the moon?" Here we Fuck go. You, here we go. <sighs> no, nope. We get like, oh. it's weird where that does go though. Um, <laughs> there, Roy and uh, he meets uh, Colonel Pruitt. Yes, on the up there, he goes with him. Donald Sutherland, another highly underused actor they got for this. Yeah. We're going we're gonna to use you to say a couple serious things and hand him a really serious file. That's yeah. That's what you're here to do, Donald. Yeah. Oh, God. Disrespectful. So, Colonel Pruitt was an old friend of his father's, and he has been recruited by the military to escort Roy to Mars. And when they get to the moon, Pruitt has a... Uh, he goes with them on the lunar... The winter journey, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They take a rover across the moon to get to the space com base, and they're escorted by U.S. military, and on their way, they are ambushed by fucking moon rover pirates. Dude, and it is breathtaking. When <laughs> when they're like... Because <laughs> they're on the moon, man, so the, the whole ba- background is completely pitch black. Yeah. And so when you see those two other like rovers, you're like, well, those are going kind of fast. <laughs> and so I, I was thinking, like, oh, are they... Are they, like... Uh, more escorts, like, what's going on? And then it's clear... It's clear the way... Brad Pitt's really good at this. The way his body language is, it's clear that they are, like... No, those are... That's unknown. Unknown people. And it, it, it's, like, really intense for a second. Yeah. For a second. And then... What happens? The car kind of, like, does that spin. Yeah. Which is a pretty, pretty sweet scene. It's a pretty... That probably cost a lot of money. <laughs> the soldier in charge is shot by, like, lasers. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. this turns into fucking Moonraker. Yeah, for, dude. For a bit. It's insane. Yeah. <laughs> and... Nope, Brad Pitt and uh, Pruitt get out. I'm just going to call him Brad Pitt, because it's... <laughs> Roy McBride. Yeah, Brad, yeah, let's go Brad Pitt. Yeah. I keep... Yeah, he's Brad Pitt. <laughs> That's not he going is. away. He is Brad Pitt, yeah. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> they get there, amazingly. Like, the pirates are never t- talking about again. No. It was just... No, like, oh, we just got away from that, but someone died. Yeah, all right. Yeah. New, yeah, let's go to the next thing. What? <laughs> what? Yeah. What if there's more? <laughs> and when they get to the base... Pruitt suddenly says, oh, I'm dying, and I can't go with you. Yeah. Like, all of a sudden, he's got a heart condition. I'm going to give you this this thing. Yeah. My, I have this it's like a Rick and Morty episode. <laughs> Morty, come closer. <laughs> you're, you're a piece of shit, Brad, but i got to uh, give you this. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you, you, you might be able to do it. <laughs> oh, fuck yeah. Shut up, Jerry. <laughs> he's even got... He kind of looks like Rick. Yeah. Oh, fucking great. So, Pru- Pruitt gives... Roy this little file and Roy, uh, he's put into intensive care and Roy gets a a um kind of hitchhikes a ride to Mars on this ship called the Cepheus which is like what? Yeah, nobody on the ship knows wh- like why he has to go there. This is a super top secret mission. You just hitchhike a ride to a different planet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and the, um, the stuff that's like happening around that's not being checked or questioned or talked about <laughs> I guess that's just to say, like, okay, this is where the world is now. Like, there's no no questions asked. That's what's happening. And Roy's mission, literally, the success of it, you know, the entire future of the human race is riding on this. Yeah. All life in the universe could be destroyed if this surge happens again. And uh, that doesn't come up that as nearly as much as it should, by the way. No. The fact that the entire universe is at stake. That's pretty big stakes. Yeah, those are, yeah. Instead, uh, instead, it's like, uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> Roy never seems to feel the burden of billions of trillions of lives. You know, he's always just like, all right, yes, yeah, sir, no, okay. sir, I'll take care of this. I only slept four hours, but I feel fine. I'll be okay. It's I haven't eaten, but I'll be okay. <laughs> Ugh. I know he... Dude, his performance in this is so fucking wooden. Yeah, I know. It's tough. Yeah. It's really tough to get invested. Yeah. So, on their way to Mars, the Cepheus gets a distress signal from a Norwegian research station. Seems abandoned, and Roy and the captain of the Cepheus go to investigate. And what they find is a fucking raged baboon that kills the captain. And is, like, locked in a module and depressurized by Roy. And that's kind of it on the baboon that I was led to believe 
took this entire station over. Yeah. And killed everybody. I thought there was going to be a gang. Yeah, I was of, expecting like a rage virus in space like or something. 2001 Space Odyssey? What's going on? Yeah. yeah. This was about to turn into 28 Days Later. Yeah. And then it didn't. <laughs> Jeez, man. Ugh, there's so many almost great movies in this movie that we never get. Yeah, I hate, hate being this guy. But I'm going to say it. This would be an amazing six to eight episode miniseries. Where, like, each episode could be... Because we need that development between Brad Pitt, like, and his, his wife and his dad. So we need yeah. all that. We need more girth. Yeah, I agree. For, like, to get on board with this character. And then you can delve more into, like, a battle on the moon. And then a fight with the fucking baboons in a spacecraft. Like, that would be awesome. I'm on board for that. <laughs> Go ahead and make that, James Gray. Just expound on... <laughs> expound on what you did, but, you know, actually hit it. Because it just never... It's like... I don't know. It's like... Things are on the table. I think I told you, like, things are on the table, but you don't get to eat them. Yeah. You know, it's kind of like, fuck. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Like, you just get to look. It's a beautiful <laughs> wax apple. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. You reach for it, you're like, oh, shit. Okay. From afar, it looks delicious. But... And then you walk away. Yeah. yeah. Ah. Sad. So, Captain dies, and the first mate takes charge of the ship, and they get to Mars, but then there's another search. And the ship loses power momentarily, and they are uh, forced to manually land this ship. And the new captain is too scared, so Roy immediately takes command of the ship, lands it no problem, because he's a superstar. Because he's Brad Pitt. Yeah. And he tells the captain, like, look, I bet you know why I had to do that, so I'm not going to tell Space Command that you fucked up. Almost killed all of us. (laughs) You weren't weren't (laughs) acting at all, that you weren't doing anything. So cold. <laughs> Oi. Set up for a great little Brad Pitt moment, though. I'm just like, I got this. <laughs> <laughs> Manual. <laughs> yeah, no problem at all. He didn't like, he just oh, kind of no. like, yeah. twisted it a few times and... Whoop. Easy. <laughs> so Roy goes to the Underground Space Com base where he meets the director, Helen Lantos. And that's Ruth Naga, right? Yes. And he is tasked to record a voice message to send to the Lima Project, hoping his dad, Clifford, will respond if he's still alive. And during a recording, Roy goes off script with an emotional appeal to Dad, saying, you know, I remember we watched black and white movies, you like musicals, yeah, yeah. I miss my dad, that kind of thing. And immediately after he shows a sign of, of emotion, he's booted off the project. And I don't think we ever get to hear what Dad's response was. No, he's like, you guys said, he said something, didn't you? you know, kind of went back to the seven. What's in the box? <laughs> What's in the computer? What's yeah. in the message? What did he say? <laughs> what did he say? <laughs> oh, boy. Brad. Um, so, yeah. Uh, he's taken off the mission, and he's told that his personal connection poses a risk to himself and to the mission's success. And before that, he had watched the file that Pruitt had given him, and in that file, he learns that his dad... Is that, is that where he learns that his dad killed all of them, right? That's what Lantos shows That's him. What, Lant- what is... Th- yeah. The, um... No, what, um... What Sutherland gives him is, um... It's just audio. And you can hear them talking about... I can't remember exactly what it is. But yeah, Lantos is the, uh... It's the audio that shows that the real mission here... Yes, yeah, is, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah is yeah. kill Clifford McBride. Mm-hmm. By, like, that's the, that's the mission. There you go, yeah. It's like what they're doing. Better yeah. safe than sorry. Yeah. And Brad Pitt has been misled by the military. Okay. Good. To go find his dad. They know he's alive. Yeah. They know he is because of... Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. That's right. And then, yeah, then that brings us to Lantos, who brings him even heavier information about his dad. So they needed Brad Pitt to, to send a message, hoping that Clifford would send one back, and then they'd be able to pinpoint his location. Okay, boom. Yeah. There we go. That yeah, clears yeah, that yeah, up. Yeah, I was yeah. wondering about that. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, uh, Roy goes to a comfort room, kind of a... Like a yoga kind of, you know, peace on earth room where you could just kind of chill. And Helen Lantos visits him, revealing she was born on Mars. She was the daughter of crew members from the Lima Project. She's a Martian. <laughs> <laughs> if this was like the distant future and I had been born on Mars, I would constantly fucking tell people I was a Martian. <laughs> oh, yeah. Especially visitors from Earth. Like, yeah. So. Greetings. I did some kind of Star Trek shit every time. Ah. Hopefully my great grandkids can do that. You never know. They'll be eating Subway on the fucking moon. God damn. Ugh. Uh, yeah, we're going up to the moon for the weekend. Like, it's the fucking lake. Yeah. 
<laughs> the shit. Ugh. So Helen has had um, her her she hasn't heard from her parents since the Lima Project disappeared, but she shows Roy some classified footage that she just had. <laughs> Not really sure where that came from. <laughs> She reveals that Clifford's crew mutinied, wanted to return to Earth, so he turned off their life support and killed half the crew. Because he is going to finish this mission. He's going to find aliens. That's all that matters. I'm the only one fit psychologically to go on. Yeah. (laughs) Only the crazy people say that. (laughs) Tommy Lee. Tommy Lee Jones. So Helen basically says, your father killed my parents. And she tells Roy that the Cepheus crew are going to go... They've been put on mission to go deliver a nuclear device to the Lima Project to yes. destroy the project and Clifford destroy everything. Yeah. And he's like, why? Like, why would they lie about this? She's like, well, Spacecom would never do anything to ruin their ruin their image, so they made your dad out to be a hero. You'd think an Applebee's on the moon so, would have ruined that image. So fucked. <laughs> yeah, that's great. <laughs> uh, yeah, why Applebee's? Why Applebee's indeed? You'd think that would... Delver margaritas on the moon? I thought that was dead now. <laughs> Me too. I don't remember the last time I ate at an Applebee's. Uh, I was 13. I don't know. Seriously, I think it was like a, a full half to- half of my life ago. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's pretty weird. I think I went there with Caleb the day we were going to go see Inherent Vice. And we were both so like intestinally distraught from that meal that we were both... Already upset before the movie started. Oh my god! And we were both like, "This is a shit day" because we didn't like the movie either. Uh. <laughs> oh, so <laughs> that's amazing. So they're gonna Applebee's <laughs> an inherent vice. Oh what, yeah, what a great that sounds like a great day to me. <laughs> well, I don't know. I haven't been to Applebee's in like I said, twelve years. So <laughs> don't go back. It'll, I don't know. It'll hurt. <laughs> so it's like Chili's, but worse. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So the crew of the Cepheus is going to Neptune to blow up the Lima Project with a nuclear bomb. And Helen and Roy decide that it should be Roy who confronts Clifford. So Helen agrees to sneak him onto the, onto the rocket. And he does, just as the rocket takes off. And this is fucking hilarious. It shouldn't be, but it is. He tells the crew, I'm, I come in peace, I mean no harm. And they immediately freak the fuck out and accidentally kill themselves. Yeah. <laughs> What did that remind you of? Deadpool two, it's the fucking X Force all over again. Yeah, so we have, so we, have we have three we have three other people. The first girl like charges him and she just smashes her face into glass and dies. And then the second guy is what is he holding like a gun or he's some hold- sort of like uh, he's got a knife. He stab he like that's right. He he's like stabs himself. Yeah, he's something. like going at Brad Pitt, which is like, dude, did you not watch Once Upon a Time in Hollywood when it came out in July? <laughs> You're not beating this guy in a knife fight. <laughs> Even if he doesn't have a knife. <laughs> so he's swinging at him, actually stabs himself. Roy and just the, pulls out a can of dog the food and guy, fucks up the guy. The last guy who was like, who was the captain, what was he doing? He was turning off the life support to kind of like blast him out and he fucking suffocated himself. Yeah, and you see his eyes go under like they get all baggy and it's yeah. pretty disgusting. Yeah, he's you know dead. what it's more like? Tucker and Dale versus Evil. <laughs> Where all the kids are just yes. fucking killing themselves What's around. The, I, I like that. Yeah. He uh, has had a doozy of a day. <laughs> and, and what's great is Brad Pitt um, calls, and he's like, uh, it was not intentional. I meant no harm. But uh, because of these actions, uh, all crew members are deceased. <laughs> what? <laughs> deceased? That's putting it lightly, buddy. <laughs> On a mission that is literally def- deciding the fate of the universe, yeah. Brad Pitt has fucked it up, killed everyone on board, and stolen the rocket. Yeah, which is like... Did he he like accidentally did what his dad intentionally did? Yeah, you know which. But what but happened? nobody. There are no spoiler alert for the end of this. There are zero consequences to this. Yeah. Oh no. <laughs> Nothing happens to Brad because of this. It's totally fine. Roy's just like, you know, he eventually gets home and is like, well, I guess I'll get with my wife. But fuck it, I, that bothered me a lot. Yeah, he's like, I'm gonna go back and. Enjoy the people that I love and the people that love me. And they show, like, Liv Tyler in slow motion. It's like, okay. Ugh. Real deep there, yeah. So, <laughs> Roy decides he's going to Neptune solo, and he's going to try to save his father and stop whatever's causing this surge. So he takes the, like, what, 79-day journey to yeah. Neptune, which 
seems light. I think right now that's like a 17, 30 year journey, some kind of crazy number. Yeah. Rockets. <laughs> Brad Pitt flying rockets. Space. <laughs> Roadhouse. <laughs> Ugh. This, this movie's tough to, dis- to discuss. There's so many holes. Uh, so he goes to Neptune by himself. Yeah. And obviously the isolation and stress start getting to him. Uh, yeah, Being alone which, that long will which, fuck anyone up. Which is like uh, a five minute part of the movie where yeah. 80 days happen, which is like, okay, we're not going to feel the real effects of this because you covered it in five minutes. So uh, whatever. <laughs> that transition was to me the, like the worst part of the movie. In my opinion, I agree, big time. Just didn't I was like after that I was like okay I'm because it, it got less intense at that point. Yeah, but I, I was like okay here we go we're gonna like go confront his dad and I, I don't know I just I want to give props to the score. Uh, oh yeah, Max Richter did the music and he did a fucking great job. Let's I'll definitely that. shot that out before we forget. Yeah. yeah, my god, brilliant. Yeah, and again technically awesome movie. It gives off a vibe of 2001 A Space Odyssey for sure. Yeah. And the massive attention to detail that James Gray put into the space realism. Yeah, yeah. And I just wish he'd put that same kind of effort into the story. <laughs> yeah, because he helped write it too with um, Ethan Gross, I believe is his Ethan name. Ethan Gross, yeah. yeah so. Oy. yeah. so, after a few weeks, Roy arrives at the Lima Project. <laughs> a couple months go by. <laughs> yeah. He takes a module to this area, to this big base another surge damages the module he has to spacewalk into the base he finds it abandoned the crew is dead he plants the nuclear bomb and then he meets dad who's looking disheveled and just Uh, crazy eyed Tommy Lee and he pretty much says like I never loved you yeah I (laughs) fucking hell yeah because he's like we need to go back home (laughs) Uh, Brad Pitt says to Tommy Lee he says we need to go back home and he's like this is home I didn't think about you your mom? I've always just been up here. I was waiting for him to Researching call... more! I was waiting for him to call him Slick. <laughs> I was... Champ. He was this close. <laughs> Agent K in space. Oh my god. So, yeah. Of course, you know, Clifford's all fucked up. He murdered like a hundred people, and he's just been living here by himself for 16 yeah, years. Losing his mind, yeah. Try, fi- trying to find aliens. He's basically. charted a whole bunch of planets that nobody's ever seen before, but he has not found any sign of intelligent life. And he's continued to work. He refused to lose faith. Roy decides to arm the weapon and takes Dad home. And he's, he puts a spacesuit on him. And Dad's the whole time just looking like, I don't want to do this. I don't want to leave. And when he's he, he turns to like unlock the thing, they're, they're tied together. And Clifford just pulls on the fucking rope yeah. and drags them both out into deep space. Which you, you knew something was coming because you knew Tommy Lee wasn't gonna wasn't gonna go. No, he's not knew, coming quietly. You, you knew it would, yeah. And so you're like waiting, and it was, it was that was a well delivered scene when he when it the, when you see the like the harness boom, mm-hmm. and you could the, the whole screen kind of shakes. It's really, that has echoes of gravity. Yes, there are so many sure. pieces of recent space movies that have been taken and shoved into this. Yep, and that bothers me a lot. Uh, so Clifford and Roy are dragged out into deep space. Roy's trying to hold on to Clifford, and Clifford's just saying, let me go, son. Let me go. You gotta let me go now. You gotta let me go. <laughs> just repeatedly. Yeah. And Roy's like, all right. Let me die in space, son. Yeah. Take, d- detaches the rope. Clifford flies out into deep space. He's gonna die a very sad, very... I was gonna say, fucking yeah, leave yeah. him in space, man. That's yeah. the wor- That's a terrible death. I hope he takes the helmet off. Make it go faster, yeah. Yeah, I wouldn't want to starve to death in space. Just floating, yeah. God. Losing your mind. Ugh. A few things are scarier than a never-ending void. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, Roy gets back in the module, and he's going to use the explosion from the, uh... from the... the Lima Project to kind of propel himself into space, because that's how explosions work in space. <laughs> and... He gets... He takes the data from the uh, Little Lima Project home. He's going to use, you know, so Space Command can decommission this or decode this data. Learn about so many new worlds as Roy is probably, you know, serving a life term in Space Gitmo for what the fuck he did here. <laughs> yeah. But nope, that doesn't happen. <laughs> he goes back to Earth. He's a little optimistic about the future. Tries to reconnect with his wife. And he's got a psyche valve where everything's just peachy. Yep. And that's the end of the movie. 
what the fuck, man? I mean, there's so many opportunities for something more here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and every opportunity the plan, like the film gets for a plot hole, it fucking takes. Mm-hmm. Like the fact that he is going to get in zero trouble for commandeering a space mission and murdering three people. Three people, yeah, is <laughs> ridiculous. Yeah, like, and they're just like, well, mission accomplished. That's not how the military works, and I doubt that's how the military is going to work a hundred years from now either. Brad Pitt. <laughs> Brad Pitt can fight on acid and in space. Yeah. What about on acid in space? I guess we'll just have to wait for Ad Astra too. <laughs> oh man. Or maybe he'll be in a Star Trek movie like Tarantino's doing. Fuck yeah. <laughs> hey, there you go. Cliff Booth's like great 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 grandson, like you know Arnold Booth or some shit, <laughs> is a spaceman. <laughs> Arnold Boone. He's like half Klingon or some shit. Yeah. Well, that's great. I'm in. <laughs> Me too. Me too. But yeah, this was just weird and yeah. had a lot of problems. I gave it a seven because visually it is amazing. It is breathtaking. The performances aren't bad. They're just not particularly memorable. Yeah. Yeah. I don't want to like dog on any any of the performers. I just don't think they're... I, it really comes down to the writing. I we think. never get enough time to care about any of these people. Yeah. The development is not good. And wh- whereas... Let's go ahead and compare to other recent space movies so, yeah. we, so we have um, First Man from last year you know uh, Gravity from what 2013 14, Interstellar from 2014 Interstellar, yeah. The Martian from the 2015 Martian. that's all in the past decade yeah are there any others we're missing in the past um, those are all the big ones yeah I, there's you know your Star course, Wars your Star yeah, Trek I, but the, the, these are more like genre specific these yeah. they're like space, space movies space dramas I would yeah. say and, and Interstellar <clears throat> While it is pretty wild and pretty out there, it fucking goes there. Yes. And it commits hard. It has that emotional connection. And you feel, you like really feel Jessica Chastain and Matthew McConaughey. Yeah. Like, you really feel that stuff. Um, Gravity, not one of my favorites, but it was also breathtaking to look at. Gravity is amazing the first time you see it. Yeah, I saw it in theater, so that was yeah. great. Yeah. But if you know what's going to happen, it does lose a bit of its punch. Yeah. So Which yeah. at Asher definitely loses its punch. You know, as it's going on, so it never really gets there. It doesn't no. punch. No, it's like winds, it's going it, to. It winds up and yeah, and then stops. Yeah, <laughs> frustrating. Uh, uh, so, um, what about first man? First man's tough because it's it's specific. It's a true story. Yeah, about a huge moment in America. But it does have that element of you know soundless space. Yeah, that this movie oh, kind yeah. of has to breathtaking. The last thirty minutes of the movie are <sighs> yeah, Whew. it's yeah, it's pretty remarkable. Yeah, it's amazing. Not and enough people saw that movie. They so. didn't. It's a shame. Go check that one out. Yeah. As far as I'm concerned, Damien Chazelle's three for three. Oh, yeah. I agree. <laughs> I would say... What would you say is your favorite? Whiplash. Me too. Absolutely. And, and then... And then... Then Lala Lala Man, And then... Probably. You think it goes one, two, three? For me, yeah. I think it's so... I think for me, too. I thought it was gonna go... I thought it was gonna go for you. I, thought I got it. Like, I haven't seen First Man since the movies. Okay. I'd, I'd like to watch it again to kind of get that judge, but... Yeah. I yeah, love Gosling, but you know he's in La La Land too. So. But Whiplash is untouchable, my God. Uh, anyway, sorry, Damon yeah. Giselle, we love you. <laughs> so then you get the and then you got the Martian. Yeah, and the Mar uh, the Martian's also one that's like relying totally on Matt Damon, but they like really give him stuff to work with, and he gets to be really funny. Well, you get the whole movie to care about him. He has emo- you know he's you get this sense of like optimism, but a shit ton of fear. Yes. And also pride, because he's yeah. accomplishing all these amazing things mm-hmm. by himself on Mars. Botanist. Yeah. You like Mark Watney. I don't know if I like Roy McBride. Yeah, well, what is there to like? You exactly. don't know anything about him. You don't. I mean, all you, you know just... is he's divorced and kind of emotionless. He's kind of a sociopath, honestly. Yeah. And it's hard to latch on to anyone, a sociopath. Anyone who's, like, I don't know... Able to get through uh, an eighty-day trip in space has got to be different. Well, so. there and back. Yeah, like fuck, man. After your dad died, so yeah. After you, technically, you you killed him, <laughs> and you murdered three. So you basically murdered four people. Yeah. Uh, I guess the military just didn't care because the mission was successful. Yeah, and who knows? I mean, who knows what was going on? Because it, apparently, it was like. There's like no maybe they couldn't. There's court- like no police or authority on the moon when there's fucking people shooting at them. So I don't maybe know. they couldn't court martial him because the mission was top secret. That's yeah, that's very possible. Yeah, but I don't. I'm. I'm not. We also don't know because they don't say shit. So yeah. yeah, yeah. There's just like a lot of missing things in the writing. They try to wrap things. it up with a nice bow, but they never fucking open the present. <laughs> yeah, like I don't. Ugh. Yeah, 
We should just keep coming up with metaphors where it's like they didn't quite give us what we. I could easily. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it was oh, a new man. car, but they never handed me the keys. <laughs> <laughs> like... <laughs> oh man! Oh whatever. That's great. So Brad Pitt, we love Brad Pitt. Uh, I think he he's done better for sure. Oh lord! I. Do you, want, do you want to talk about that? Let's talk quick? about Brad Pitt. Let's yeah. talk about Let's our talk. favorite Brad Pitt stuff. Yeah. All right, Brad Cause, Pitt. Because this is definitely not one of my favorites either. No, I thought it was going to be, but I really was expecting it to be like in my upper echelon of Brad Pitt, like top five, like favorite favorite things he's done. Yeah. No, it's not even there. It's not, it might it might not even be in the top ten when I really look at it, Mm-mm. which is pretty crazy because he has a long long list. Yeah. Off the top of your head, what's what what? What's the first couple movies you think of? Uh, see, I, I'm going straight to Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, honestly. Wow! Cliff Booth. Okay. That movie changed me. Like, I <laughs> I love that movie, and I love me him too, in it. Me too, man. He's great. He is, he's, he's hilarious. He's a little sad. Yeah. But he's fucking great. He's great. He's the guy you want in your corner at all oh times. Oh, my God, yeah. He's the guy who's going to save you for a bunch of goddamn hippies I think with that's... a can of dog food. <laughs> Yeah, he mur- <laughs> he murdered multiple people in space. Yeah, and then he mur- he like stopped the Manson up- uproar basically <laughs> single handedly. So, uh, and then you know obviously Leo with the, the flamethrower, flamethrower. So <laughs> that was pretty good. I go to, I go to I go to Tyler Durden. Is the first Tyler Durden? Yep. First thing Fight I think Club. of. It's the first thing I go. saw him in. Like yeah. when I was a kid. Like yeah. I'm still obsessed with that movie. Obsessed with the book. He is Tyler Durden. You know. Yeah. Um, he was he was at the, like the peak of like his physique. He he's just fascinating when he does the. The scene where he spits up the blood, and he's laughing. Like I'm like, this guy is a genius, you know? Yeah. But uh, Cliff Booth is definitely right there. Yeah. yeah. For the longest time, it was Aldo Rain for me. Oh, yeah. I love Aldo. And it's yeah. still, like, it's up there with Cliff. It's, it's a tough, you know, both Tarantino, tough one to pick. Yeah. Both Tarantino. The Glorious Bastards was the first time I'd ever seen Brad Pitt in a, like, not be Brad Pitt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that was exciting. Mm-hmm. Ugh. I like my Nazis in their uniforms. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, what else do we get? Seven, of course. Seven. What's in the box? I, he's yeah, he's, yeah. he's great in that. And he he he's working with Morgan Freeman, like a s- extremely established actor. And Brad Pitt was young, man. So yeah, I enjoy that one a lot. He's been nominated for three Oscars so far. Mm-hmm. Uh, Twelve Monkeys, Benjamin Button, and Moneyball. Yeah, Moneyball. Oh, I fucking love Moneyball. I don't like baseball. <laughs> I really, I really don't. I love sports, but baseball is not one of those sports I love. Yeah, it's pretty boring to me. It's weird. I don't like baseball either, but I really like baseball movies. Yes, I was just about to say that. They're well. They're, I think they're the easiest to make. Yeah, because uh, the action is the easiest to capture. Mm-hmm. So I mean, yeah, we you know Sandlot, all those classics, and you get like the Natural and Field of Dreams and fucking Moneyball. Moneyball is great, but Moneyball is about like the strategy behind. A certain, a specific team and a sp- specific time and place too, and a true story. And Brad Pitt is that movie. Like he carries it. Uh, Jonah Hill's great in it, but I love that one. That might be my top five. That role is he's he's stellar in that. I didn't know he could do that. He's just <laughs> like a dad, you know. Uh, love yeah, him. Very nice. Uh, what else is more recent? Um. Oh. Um. Um. Jesse James, of course, is the assassination of Jesse James, James by the coward Robert Ford. So good. Underrated, underseen. I think I don't think nearly enough people. Most people I ask, I'm like, you seen that? I'm like, oh, I haven't heard of that one. <laughs> check I'm, it out. I'm one of them. I haven't uh, seen check it. Check it out, man. I, <laughs> it's really good. <laughs> I want to. For you, sure. you would love it. Yeah. Well, I love the story of Jesse James, and I love yeah. Brad Pitt, and I don't. I do like Casey Affleck. I won't mm-hmm. say I love him, but I do like his performances. I don't. I don't. There's not enough movies I've seen that I could say I love Casey either. No. I can't say that about Ben either, honestly. That I love Ben. I agree. Me too. Especially he has some stretches that are bad, but... Oh, yeah. <laughs> this, is, this is about Brad. Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, uh, how could I forget? My personal, like, favorite... It's not the best in any way, and I can't, like, really compare it to the rest of these, but Floyd, True Romance. Ah, Floyd! He's absolutely hilarious in that, as the, <laughs> as the stoner character. Uh, you just take a left. Huh? <laughs> He's really, really good in that. Oh, uh, boy. You like, you like 12 Monkeys? I don't honestly. No. I like him in Twelve Monkeys, but yeah. I find that movie very off-putting. That's fair. That's fair. I, I watch it because of him. Yeah. Yeah. The Big Short. <sighs> wow. He, he is he, kind of a minor role in that, but he's particularly memorable. Very effective. Yeah. That's a very odd film. That's that's another. That's very similar to his Moneyball role, where he's just kind of like a smart dad. You know? Fury. Oh, one of my favorite 
recent war movies for uh, sure. Great in Fury. Twelve Years a Slave. He's very brief, but he also helped produce that movie. So yeah, I think he won an Oscar for producing that. One. Yes, he did. Yes, I fucking loved him in Killing Them Softly. I think that movie gets I was a gonna, bum rap. We're, we're gonna bring that one up. Yeah, yeah. It's a. I think that's a great movie too. Very underrated. He wasn't at his best in World War Z. No, nah, I'm honestly a, not a fan. Yeah, very forgettable movie. Mm-hmm. A, lot of, a lot of people like it though. Burn after reading. Oh, duh. Chad yeah, Feldheimer. Duh. Yeah, the Cohen. His Cohen. Fuck yeah. yeah. I mean, we thought you might be worried about the security of your shit. <laughs> Who the fuck is this? <laughs> <laughs> Who the fuck <laughs> is this? <laughs> For more on Burn After Reading, check out episode twenty-five, The Cohen Brothers. Fucking great movie. <laughs> and he's great in it. <laughs> I never thought I could watch Brad Pitt and Francis McDormand hang out like in an apartment with some, with Brad Pitt dancing by a microwave. You know? <laughs> Doing the goofiest dance I've ever seen in my life. What a great role for him, man. So good. And uh, I know you're a big Benjamin Button fan. I have yet to see Huge, it. Of course, yeah. You know, of course, he, yeah, he's a... You know, him and David Fincher... You know, I've clearly clicked together. Uh, they've done <laughs> done a few things together. I really liked him in Troy. Honestly. I think Troy's awesome. Troy's a very underrated movie. I Troy gets love a that. bad rap too. Yeah, I, I don't, I don't know. But there, there, there are some people like, yeah, look at its meta score there. Yeah, come on. Its meta score is a what is it? Fifty six. Fifty six. I know that's not, you know, it's like a lot of critics put together, but it's almost three hours long. But I mean, you've got Brad Pitt, Eric Bana, Orlando Bloom, Brian Cox. Ugh. Like, come on. <laughs> Man. And it's the story of the Siege of Troy. How do you not yeah, fucking love yeah, that? Yeah, yeah, There's, like, great combat sword scenes. Oh. Yeah. Eric Bana probably had his finest. Yeah, probably. I would say. Uh, All right, I gotta go. My probably top five, Snatch. Oh, shit, yeah. Ah, fucking, of course. yes. That's easy Mickey top O'Neil. five. O'Neill. Easy top five. <laughs> That's an automatic, yeah. I don't know where it is exactly, but it's, it's there. <laughs> that has to be represented. Classic. <laughs> oh, dude. I'm betting on him again. Okay, any... Any bare knuckle fight, <laughs> I'm taking him. I'll trade you for a caravan. <laughs> Just, oh, that that terrible Irish. Fuck! I want to watch that movie Snatches now. Snatches the fucking best. It's been a, it's been a while. <laughs> yeah. That's a fun one. Oh, He's boy. been in so many awesome like cult classics. You know, yeah, Brad Pitt. Absolutely, the guy has not. He's been constantly working since the nineties. He doesn't. He doesn't do like the. Like I'm gonna just make a shit ton of money. He's like I'm gonna work with some kick ass you know directors and writers. Yeah. It's great. Somewhere I read somewhere that he was a character actor trapped in the body of a movie star. Yeah, yeah, that's a thing. Yeah, that's that's a, definitely yeah. a saying, and it's true. Poor guy. <laughs> yeah, I'm a great actor, and I'm super hot. Oh, oh it poor must me. Be rough. <laughs> um, I like. Uh, I don't know if you've seen a Tree of Life. I have not. I'm not a fan of Terrence Malick. He's tough. Yeah, yeah. he's tough. It's very like. I find him extremely self indulgent and pretentious. Yeah, like, oh, look at this tree. <laughs> tree of Life. Yeah. When I found out he made that movie, that's like. Supposed to be like a hundred years or something. Yeah, like, yeah. I don't fucking. I'm done with them. <laughs> Fair enough. I don't enough. need you. <laughs> I don't need another director to yeah. tackle. <laughs> and of course, there's always there's the Ocean's trilogy, <clears throat> where he's very recognizable in that rusty. one. Of course, everybody knows that. Yeah, that was his. You got like Meet Joe Black, that Mr. stuff. Mr. and Mrs. From... Smith. He's, yeah. he's, he's had his paycheck. He's, oh Jesus, he's done all kinds of stuff. Yeah. yeah. But okay, so let's let's nail definitely Cliff Booth. Cliff Booth, yeah. Definitely Tully Durden. Yeah. Definitely, what's his name in Snatch? Mickey O'Neill. Mi- yeah, Mickey. Definitely Mickey. And then... Aldo. Aldo for sure. So we got one more spot. All yours. <laughs> Do we go seven? Do we go... Ah. Ooh. I feel like... Se- or Moneyball. Or, man... Or, or do we just throw Floyd in there from True Romance? Because that's our guy. <laughs> yeah, let's do that. That's number five. Floyd. <laughs> so we we'll, so we agree. We're gonna agree. We're gonna make it right here. Cliff Booth is number one. Yeah. Like we can we can agree on that. We'll say Durden's two. Okay. Aldo three. Like it. Mickey four. All right. Floyd five. That was easy. What an awesome, <laughs> awesome group. I can't believe we fucking threw Floyd in there. That's beautiful. That's great. We got yeah <laughs> just for fun because we both all right we both love True Romance. It's great. And that, that's like, for both of us, that's probably the oldest movie we've seen him in. Oh, no, we've we've both seen probably River Runs Through It. I have not seen that. No. Um, that one's pretty good. I know that's a lot of ladies' favorite one because he's real real cute and that, real charming. <laughs> I have not seen um, Thelma and Louise. I have. I know he's I in for, that. Uh, yeah, I forgot. That's a huge role, of course. That's yeah. where America kind of saw him as a yeah, pretty boy, yeah. Oh, yeah. And, strong, um, strong jawline, Brad Pitt for for 
three decades now. Yeah, everything before that's bit parts. It was Thelma and Louise was his big break. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Cool World. I've always wanted to see that. I've heard that one. I've never really heard good. Yeah. River Runs Through. Yeah, yeah. That's the second one that yeah, was big. Mm-hmm. California. True Romance. Interview with the Vampire. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That one's, yeah. That one's interesting. Legend of the Fall. No, I like that movie too. Sleepers. The There's De- so he's yeah. wow he's in so many. Good the ones. Devil's Own. Seven Years in Tibet. The Mexican Spy Game. Yeah, he's Confessions of a Dangerous Mind. I forgot he was in that. Oh, I love that movie, man. <laughs> Sam Sam Rockwell. Oh, yeah. Chuck Barris. What a strange human being. <laughs> Babel. Yeah, that's a big one too. Yeah, yeah. We, I forgot a few. <laughs> there's been there's been there's been a lot. Allied. I remember that one. That was interesting. War Machine. His brief appearance in Deadpool 2. Which is funny because he, the we talked about yeah. how that scene in Ad Astro is like Deadpool 2. It's great. <laughs> yeah. One wonderful, wonderful career. One oh, of one sure. of my one of my favorite guys. And he's definitely like he's not done by his, oh, at no. all. No. I, if anything, he's showing that he's like found new life, I yeah. think. He's As, on a second win. For especially sure. what he did in Once Upon a Time is <laughs> is is insane. I'm glad he's become one of Tarantino's guys. Oh he is. That's great. Yeah, he's he. He's one of Tarantino's guys, and he's one of Fincher's guys. <laughs> ah, man, what what I would do to like hang out with those <laughs> those dudes? Like, what what are you gonna do to get in a room with them? And, and <laughs> what the fuck would I say? What would ha- what would I have to say to those guys? I don't know. Fucking nothing. <laughs> I love you. <laughs> When's the next one come out? <laughs> all right. I have all of your stuff on DVD. <laughs> you want to sign it? <laughs> oh my god. So yeah, Ad Astra, kind of a kind of a bust. More fun to talk about Brad Pitt than it is Ad Astra for sure. Yeah, um, for, forgettable. I'm probably never going to watch it again. Yep, I agree. Um, I I expect to see it at the Oscars for some technical awards. Yeah, but this ain't getting any no any writing no. or acting. And out. Let's bring up how much money it's made. Forty six mil on a budget of like eighty to one hundred million. Oh, it's not a good start. Probably not. Gonna make being it. trounced by the Downton Abbey movie. Yeah, how about that? <laughs> how cool is that? We were talking. How crazy is it that um, a, a, a movie that's made after a TV show beat essentially beat Brad Pitt yeah. in a space movie? That's really crazy. It kind of, I think it kind of shows not a sign of the times or anything, but I think it kind of shows like what the general people who are going to see movies are interested in. And if you have an allegiance to something like Downton Abbey. And there's like this big fan base, then they're gonna go yeah. fucking check out the movie because it's two hours of characters they love and adore. Yeah. Whereas Brad Pitt, you're kind of gambling on this, on this Ad Astra, which the trailer is the movie. So yeah, tough, no tough, surprises. tough beat, James Gray. <laughs> <laughs> tough beat. Come up with the whole story, including an ending, and you know make your characters' motivations make sense. It's not that tough. I've seen people do it many times. <laughs> yes. Oh yes, but all of his like I've seen Lost City of Z and I liked it, but it it's way too long and it it meanders and this movie has the same problem. Yeah, yeah. Visually great, production design great, costumes great, story just you know not quite there. Well, doesn't quite bite. Yeah, no, it's tough. Damn it's tough. shame. But you know they can't all be winners. No, no, we go see movies. You know this is part of this is part of what you do. It's yeah. part of part of the game. If we just solely did podcasts on good movies, it gets stale. You need the occasional stinker in there to keep things interesting. So, um, you got anything else you want to add on Ad Astra? No, I mean, speaking of which, I wanted to mention this. The title is Latin for "To the Stars." Oh, there you go. Yeah. Okay. Right on. I didn't know that. Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, yeah. I... <laughs> Yeah, again, I don't know whether to recommend this or not. If you like Brad Pitt, go check it out. Yeah. If not, save the money. Couldn't hurt. I, wait for DVD. I'll say that. Yeah, but then again, it also is like you see in theaters and it's like, oh, it's you tough. know, it's kind of tough. It's tough. All right. If you, if you have an extra if you have $10. A coo- if you have a coupon, yeah, go see that extra. There you go. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> uh, well, we will talk to you next time. Stay tuned for whatever we got coming next Wednesday. Possibly a bonus. You never know. Stay classy.